Hello everyone and welcome back to Shanka Show, where you can learn something new about life in the Soviet Union. And I'm your host, Sergei Sputnikov, aka John Wayne Cheeseburger. In my recent videos, I talked a lot about Soviet bad boys, Soviet workers, Nisuni, the people that carried goods out of their factories, Letuni, the job hoppers, Pragulshiki, slackers. But what about the good guys? And when I say good guys, I mean Soviet workers that still work hard, did a quality job regardless, they didn't have carrot or stick, and they did it for whatever reason, maybe just professional pride, or just that was their mentality, attitude towards the work. So sure, we had some of those too. And I call such workers the ideal people, because if they work hard and produce quality product, regardless financial initiative, the carrot, or being scared, being sent to the labor camp, it's your stick. If those people be in vast amounts, socialism probably would work because socialism is an ideal system for the ideal people. Unfortunately, there's just not enough ideal people to support such system. But as one of my viewers pointed out, the speed of the caravan is determined by its slowest camel. So if you have enough of slow camels, the whole caravan can get bogged down stuck and die in a desert. Late Soviet comic Mikhail Zhvanevsky once explained the situation of the Soviet economy in the simple terms. It's hard to do a good job assembling a bicycle if you're doing a good job and you're getting 150 rubles a month. If the guy next to you is a slowpoke and he gets 150 rubles a month and the guy next to him doesn't assemble a single bike and he still gets 150 rubles a month. But still, we had workers that exceeded expectations and they were called Udarnik. Udarnik. It's a very strange Russian word. I would say it's a Soviet word because Udaryat means to strike. So that's kind of like a striker, but I don't know. I would translate it maybe like a heavy hitter. So that's the person that always exceeds the quotas, always does above expectations. And that was the official title that given to him, Udarnik. There were several ways to be recognized as Udarnik. Usually you won't get any bonus for it, but you will get a cute little badge that will say Udarnik Kommunistischskova Truda. So that's your heavy hitter of the communist labor. My father Nikolai got such a badge back in 1982. It came also with the little red book. But I know for a fact that he was never a Udarnik. He was definitely new soon because he carried a lot of paint and paint thinner out of his place of work, but I don't recall him doing anything amazing when it came to the communist labor. Actually, I find the title Udarnik Kommunistischskova Truda, so Udarnik of the communist labor, kind of strange, because if you do communist labor, you're not supposed to get paid for it, because communist society is a cashless and governmentless society according to Marx. I mentioned that before, a lot of Soviet workers were quite cynical about these badges, and we had this little uh, poem, Parabotal Durachok, Znachok, you worked really hard, fool, so here's the badge for you. Another way to recognize a hard worker, or to recognize Udarnik, would be to issue him so-called Gramata, so there's a pretty piece of paper with the Soviet symbols and says, congratulations, you awarded for your hard labor with this piece of paper, with this gramata. Another way to be recognized for your good work is to find your picture on so-called Pachotna Daska. So that's like the board of honor. So we had the boards of shame, those were for crappy workers, and then we had the boards of honor, Pachotna Doski will be posted pictures of the best workers at the factory. So as you see, Soviet government found different ways of just patting a worker on the shoulder and tell him he did a good job instead of just giving him cash. Not sure why, maybe because there was concern that if you constantly reward with money people who work hard, it will create more inequality. I'm not sure. When I flipped to the pages of my father's workbook, to Tudovaya Knishka, I found a section where there are notes about him being awarded with this communist labor Udarnik badge, then just a gramata, just a paper, piece of paper award, and one time he actually got a watch, uh, which wasn't inexpensive, nothing fancy watch. Uh, but as I said, I didn't see any cash rewards. I know for a fact that my mother Elena was a hard worker, but for some reason she never got a badge of being Udarnik. But she got this fancy medal that called Labor Veteran. 
it was given to people who worked for more than 30 years, I believe. So if you had your working career over 30 years, you were issued that medal. I think it was also happening around 1982. There was no uh, bonuses attached to it, just a, this cool medal. When I was doing research for this video, I discovered that actually Udarnik badges were quite different designs over the years. So starting from the Stalin era, they look quite a bit different. And the one that my dad got, it's kind of like 1970s, 1980s design. So there's a lot of these badges available for sale on eBay and Etsy.com. So if you're interested to find one of those, uh, Etsy would be probably the best place to go. Etsy.com. E-T-S-Y.com. Okay, my friends, that's all I have for you today. I hope you learned something new. Please don't forget to like this video and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.
Sergey uh, wrote a book based on diaries he made when he was first in the United States. And I, as I understand, this is just volume one, right? That's true. He's going to have more, multiple volumes coming out. Well, I said, well, since uh, Sergey is kind enough to come up and speak with us, I bought the book. I said, I might as well read this. I read this in one city two hours, two and a half hours. I just couldn't put it down. It was so fascinating because uh, your writing is very compelling for one. And his story is very interesting for two. It's really interesting. You know, we've lived here our whole lives. We don't have that perspective. It's just so interesting to hear someone else's perspective about what we take for granted. So I hope you really tune in and, and listen to what he has to say. It's a very interesting, very informed perspective. Sergey is not a historian. He's an electrical engineer by trade. But I find that he has a depth of understanding on history, economics, culture. So just a, just a very observant fellow and a, a great storyteller. So uh, let's...